Ensign Zen. A toast to the man dedicated to making an honest man of me. Lieutenant Astor, a toast to the man dedicated to being an honest man. You're more than I could ever have asked for. You are making me blush. You stay put. I'll get rid of whoever it is. Enter. Uh, can I help you, sir? I'm sorry. Zen? Is Jorian Zen here? Jorian, you have a visitor. Dow? Gal, come in. Excuse me, where are my manners? Cassius Dow, this is Lieutenant Corey Astor. Corey, this is Dow, my mentor in the initiate program. It's a pleasure to meet you, Dow. What brings you from Trill, Dow? I need your help, Jorian. You see, I'm dying. There's not much I can do, Ensign. He suffers from a degenerative neurological disease to which only Trill are susceptible. The Dao symbiont is still healthy, but it'll have to be removed soon. So what does that mean for the host? It means Cassius will die so that the Dao symbiont may live. The symbiont's strength is the reason why the host is still alive. Doctor? I'd like a few minutes with him. Alone? Jorian, you look terrible. May I make you some tea? You were always gracious to a fault. You never let me make you tea. It's a very comforting custom, you know. Dal, why did you come to me? You can get the best care on Trill. I'm afraid our fellow Trills are somewhat less gracious than I. What do you mean? I'm not welcome on our home world. Not welcome? I've been expelled. Expelled? Zen, surely I taught you the rhetorical skills to do more than repeat everything I say. Why were you expelled, sir? 
I fear that 17 lives have sharpened my wit but dulled my wisdom. Sir, please? Love, then. I fell in love during life number 16. Deeply, ravenously in love. As Cassius now, I've spent my life trying to extinguish these feelings, trying to set them aside, trying to be a good little joined trill. Finally, a year after you left Trill, I resigned my position in the initiate program. I went to seek her out. Dow, you didn't. Reassociation is- An unforgivable offense for a joined Trill, I know. Jorian, if I die, the symbiont dies. It deserves to live. Of all my students, you were the one most dedicated to exploration. You joined Starfleet when everyone else thought it was unfashionable. Everyone but you. You said, what good is eternal life if you don't spend it chasing your dreams across the universe? Jorian, would you accept the symbiont? Sir, if I do that, I'll... You'll inherit my sentence. Your family will disown you, and all Trills will treat you as a pariah. I know I'm asking far too much, and yet I must ask you, Jorian Zen, you are the noblest Trill I know. You flatter me, Dow. I don't have time for flattery, Jorian. Only honesty. Honestly, sir? I'll have to think about this. Of course, of course you do. But don't think too long. First, the Cardassian violate our territory. Now, the Tholians and the Breen send their forces across Solna space in search of those damn tetrahedrons. Where are they looking? How many ships? We've tracked seven incursions by the Tholians, three by the Breen. Task forces of three to eight ships at a time scouring the McAllister Nebula. The McAllister Nebula? That makes sense. The Nebula is thought to be a loose part of the patch, composed of the same gases, probably ejected when the patch was formed. Why come to us? Regrettably, we can't spare the forces to stop these trespassers. And we know how valuable the Tetrahedrons are to the Federation. Are we not partners for peace in this region? The Sona hope our cooperation helps the Federation exploit the secrets of the Tetrahedrons and share this knowledge with its allies. I don't know what to do, Corey. I've spent my whole life preparing to be joined, but like this, this complicates everything. I knew it was risky leaving Trill to join Starfleet. It put me at the bottom of the list to be joined. But hosting an exiled symbiont isn't what I had in mind. You joined Starfleet because you knew in your heart you were an explorer. You chose me, even when I ignored you, because your heart told you to. Listen to your heart now. What does it tell you? We cannot afford another tetrahedron to fall into Tholian or Green hands. Starfleet Command concurs with my recommendation that we dispatch a reconnaissance mission immediately. How many ships, Admiral? One. One? We need to gather information, Commander, not provoke hostilities. You'll go in, 
find out what they discovered, then get out. Fine. I'll take the Saratoga. Commodore Knapp will be leading the mission. Aboard the Antietam, the Commodore is the officer with the most experience in the McAllister Nebula. He commanded the Devonshire there. I'm also dispatching a contingent of ships from Deep Space Nine to a nearby sector should the mission prove insightful. You'll depart at 0700 tomorrow. That will be all. Docking slip 12, level 2. I'm puzzled by the Admiral's continuing lack of confidence in me. She has every confidence in you, Commander. Just not very much trust. It takes time and effort to win her trust. But you will, eventually. Just don't do anything to make her more suspicious of your motives. You know, frowning seems to have become your default expression. <laughs> Kieran Azan. In a Starfleet uniform, no less. You know, you pretend to be much wiser, Tolian. But it seems to me you've become as reckless as you accused me of being 15 years ago. You were a child playing grown-up games, Karen. The stakes in the games that I play are much, much higher. So I've heard. So you heard. I am a Lorian. Race of listeners, remember? And what I've heard is you want to take on the entire Tholian assembly. And your old friend. Surik? Well, it would explain a lot. After all, you never were good at taking your own advice. Meaning? Meaning that a certain someone told me to bide my time 15 years ago. And it's thanks to that advice that I'm still here. Here being? Ship's counselor, USS Intrepid. <laughs> You're quite possibly the most unlikely. You know, the older you get, the more you start to sound like my mother. Listen, Surik and I, our situation is different. It's personal. And it'll be personal later. You, me, Siroc, we have the advantage of playing a longer game. Don't risk being struck out now just because you want to make up ground. You've been checking up on me. Well, it's not hard to when your family's oldest friend's trying to start the next galactic war. Listen to me, Tolian. You're risking the few advantages you have because you want instant results. Now's not the time to play your full hand. Siroc will slip up, sooner or later. For now, you need to show these people, these people who you're going to need, that you're one of them. It's the only way you can earn their trust. I don't believe for a minute you're any kind of a ship's counselor. Enter. Captain Shelby. I believe the doctor has briefed you on my predicament. Yes. You have quite the decision before you, Ansem. Is there something I can do to help? If I go through with this, I'll need to rely on your discretion, ma'am. Of course, then. Absolutely. Truthfully, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> if I follow the desires of my heart, I risk losing my family, my home world. And if you don't? A venerable creature's life is snuffed out because it could not reject the desires of its heart. Zen. I've recently come to know a little bit about loss and regret. And I would choose loss over regret every time. So you can recover from loss, but regret is something that can eat at you for the rest of your life. Jorian, I believe that you'll make the best choice.
sir, we're on approach to the McAllister Nebula. Anything on long-range sensors? It's difficult getting a precise reading through the nebula's background radiation. But I am getting some strange energy signals leading to a nearby star system. Multiple signatures. Are they still in there, Mr. Noros? A large number of ships went into the system, but none have come out. Bearing? 345 Mark 58. Take us in, Ensign, gingerly. We don't want to raise any alarms. We're entering the nebula, sir, and losing all but short range sensors. Tactical analysis? 16 ships total. 12 Tholian, 4 Breen. But they're flying just as blind as we are, sir. Let's keep it that way. Mr. Wozniak, rig us for silent running. Bring us to yellow alert. Fire up passive sensors and get us as close as you can. Mr. Darwin, I want to know the instant they know we're here. Aye, sir. Their scans appear to be focused exclusively on the planet's surface. They're ignoring the possibility that the tetrahedrons might be in orbit. So they haven't found anything yet. Commodore, I suggest we initiate our own isolated scans aimed above the planet. Sir, I disagree. Our orders are to observe. Isolated pulses could be detected by the Tholians. Commodore, our mission was reconnaissance, not mere observation. If we find the Tetrahedron, we can call the fleet from DS-9 to assist us. Sir, they may be waiting for us to reveal ourselves. We've been here for 36 hours and learned nothing. Our fleet is close enough if we need them. Begin isolated scans. Low-level, tight beams. Someone's awake over there after all, sir. Three ships breaking formation on an intercept course. Sir, they're launching torpedoes. One near miss, sir. I don't think they had a precise read on us. Take us into the nearest Metrium cloud. Let them think they've scared us off. Aye, sir. They're moving off. Sir, I believe we've compromised our mission. Our best bet now is to report to Admiral Nechea and rendezvous outside the nebula with the Seventh Fleet. I thought our mission was to find a tetrahedron. Your mission? is to follow orders, not your personal agenda. That's enough, gentlemen. We have other problems now. The Gray's behavior towards the Tetrahedron just doesn't make sense. Little about the Gray makes sense. They keep combing the patch for Tetrahedrons and trying to beam aboard, and they trigger some sort of self-destruct mechanism. Could that be it? Captain. Gentlemen, give me what you have. We've been analyzing the Gray's tactics in all our recorded encounters with the Tetrahedrons. Captain, we've assumed the Gray are trying to take the Tetrahedrons for themselves. What if we're wrong? How do you mean? Every time the Gray find a Tetrahedron, it's blown up. Like in the Osiris system. They try to beam aboard, triggering... They're doing it on purpose. The Gray are purposely destroying the Tetrahedrons? Why would they want to do that? Captain, there's a link here. We find a tetrahedron on the Baku Ocean, and the Gray attacked the system twice. When we discovered the tetrahedrons in the Osiris system, the Gray showed up and triggered the self-destruct. The Antietam is looking for a tetrahedron in the McAllister Nebula right now. Captain, the Gray have been there too. I think that we better share your theory with Commodore Knapp. If you're right, then they may be in danger. And the Gray have demonstrated that they're willing to sacrifice their own ships to keep their secrets. You've decided. I have. I'm going to do it. So tonight's our last night together. As us. But it'll have to be a secret. Only Dr. Hanglar and some of the command staff will know. Of course. But you'll be a different person. How will you be able to keep that a secret? What will I call you? 
I was just gonna have to get used to going by my name. It's gonna drive him crazy. Corey, I can't promise I'll feel the same way about you. Dow got into this because of his love for a woman. I don't know how much of that motivation will survive the joining. Jorian, you know I love you, but you have to do this. So I guess just being friends will have to do. For a long time, I felt like I had to prove myself worthy of you. Like I had to compete against what you felt for Ensign Rowe. Jorian, you don't Corey, have to. you deserve better than this. But I want you to know how much I love you. Commodore, the Tholians are now aiming isolated pulses above the planet. I'm receiving a priority message from DS-12. It sounds like trouble. What's wrong? The Grey must know the general location of the tetrahedrons and are looking for them now. The Tholians, isolated scans, will tip the Grey off to their presence. Isolated pulses are like blood to a shark. If the Grey are in the area, they will come. They will come. Commodore, we've got company. Massive gray energy signatures. Take us deeper into the Metrian cloud, Ensign. Power down all systems. That battleship is heading straight for the Tholians. Ensign Wozniak, give the gray ship some clearance. Then follow, full impulse. Aye, sir. Gentlemen, we're out of our league. Mr. Wozniak, take us back to normal space. We need to call in the fleet from DS-9. Commodore, this battle will be over before we get back. If there's a tetrahedron here, this is our only chance. They haven't found one, Mr. Naros. Without one, this is not our battle. Sir, they've lost at least half their fleet. The Tholian and Breen are powerful, but unimaginative. Perfect prey for the Grey. I'm reading another six ships on the far side of the planet. They appear to have uncovered a tetrahedron there. Damn, it looks like you're going to get your wish, Commander. Red alert. Mr. Wozniak, change course. Take us to the far side of the planet. Aye, sir. <laughs> sir, we're approaching the Tholian Breen fleet. They're under attack by a third gray ship. On screen. Commodore. If that gray ship gets within a transporter range, they can trigger a self-destruct, just like they did in the Osiris system. Can we stop them? Sir, now may be a good time to call in the cavalry. If our fleet tried to take that tetrahedron, we wouldn't fare any better against this many great battleships. There must be some way, something the Tholians haven't thought of. Shields down to 78%. We've worn out our welcome. Move us off. If the gray triggered the self-destruct mechanism, there's no way we can escape the shockwave at impulse. I believe I found a way out, sir. There's a current on the edge of the system. A current? So far from the patch? The nebula is an ejected part of the patch. It shares the same properties. This current is so deep in subspace that Tholians can't readily detect it. Deeper than Surak knows where to look. They've triggered the self-defense mechanism. The planet's core is overloading. Naros, we're going to need your escape route, and fast. The remaining great forces have folded out of the system. The Tholians and the Breen are trying to get to open space. Will they make it? Against the level eight shockwave, most will be destroyed. Time to launch point. 30 seconds, sir. Commodore, tachyon pulses ready and warp speed is available in your command. On my mark, Mr. Wozniak. Activating tachyon pulse now. 
Engage. It appears Ro and McCabe were right. The Grey were on a seek and destroy mission. It certainly looks that way. But I'm puzzled. The Grey should want the tetrahedrons for themselves. To help feed energy into the dying sun. Why destroy them? The lesser of two evils? The entire quadrant is trying to get their hands on them. I fear it goes deeper than that. The mechanism that allows those tetrahedrons to feed power to a star or planet is critical to understanding the Gray's intentions. I suggest we redouble our efforts with the Baku tetrahedron. Corey. You look terrible. May I get you some tea? When I get out of here, you'll have to let me make you tea. It's a very comforting ritual, you know. Zorian? Tao. How much of you is still Zen? Enough. <laughs> <laughs> 